We're talking with Doug Somerville from the Department of Industry and Investment, New South Wales, about American fowl brood. So now we're aware that we've uh, got American fowl brood in our system, in our apiary, it's important to have a management strategy. It's important to have a management strategy for fowl brood even if you haven't got American fowl brood in the system. One of those uh, best management practices in the bee industry or keeping bees is to regularly inspect hives. So you inspect every hive you own in the spring and the autumn and look for disease symptoms, look for failing queens uh, and just a general, get a, a general health card report for each of the hives. Um, also good practice at any other time of the year, in particularly in spring, summer and autumn, that if uh, we've got a, a colony that's not performing, so we might have three or four or five hundred colonies, going in April of a hundred and five are not um, up to scratch in relation to producing honey. Ask the question why, they really need a brood inspection to find out why. Is it a queen or is it a disease? Because if it's American fowl brood and you're not on the ball in relation to managing that American fowl brood, or, or trying to remove the colonies that are infected with that disease, you'll have effectively spread the disease through other healthy colonies by your management. One of the main ways of spreading the disease is taking honey supers off to extract them uh, with all those combs in them. And uh, then those combs uh, find their way into other hives which are quite healthy and with no AFE and the spores that are still remaining on those combs are con ingested or consumed by that colony and then that colony eventually succumbs to the disease. So one of the main methods of spreading this disease is actually through contaminated combs. So if, if you're managing the disease, once you're aware of it, uh, it, you really do need to be conscious of the disease status in each hive, particularly ones that are not performing, and uh, inspect hives on a, on a fairly regular basis. The, uh, the department does recommend that once you're aware of AFB in an apiary that you should have an inspection of all the hives in that apiary every uh, two months before you, until you've got two consecutive queen inspections and then you should have had the disease close to being under control. How do you go about eliminating it though, getting the disease out of, of the hives? Understanding the risk factors associated with the disease on what might spread the disease uh, it's important. So as I said in relation to uh, once you have disease in the system it's important not to spread contaminated equipment around the place. So just because the brood down here has got the disease and you can't see any disease in this top box doesn't mean there's not disease up here. The, uh, the spore forming stage of the disease uh, can last for decades and decades and it's very difficult to diagnose. So you've got to assume that the disease is more or less in everything in an apiary that has American fowl brood and be cautious of how you uh, move that material around the apiary. Initially, if this was a healthy hive, how we would get the disease uh, would be from this colony robbing out a disease source somewhere else. So one of the other hives out of our management control might be two kilometres away or a, a feral colony somewhere dies of the disease and or someone's exposing honey to your bees having access and robbing that honey then they could bring that disease back to the hive. That's how the disease is initially contracted by the hive. So invariably it's the very strong colonies that first get the disease, not the weak colonies. So are there any systems that I can implement to prevent the disease's spread? The, the systems that uh, a lot of commercial beekeepers these have adopted is a barrier system. A barrier system concepts are very common in intensive livestock production systems. Uh, if you've got a chook farm you don't usually like the entry of other chook farmers onto your premises because they could be bringing in pest and diseases onto their farm, onto your farm. A similar situation with American fowl brood. If you've got several apiaries and you're commercial then moving your equipment or the sticky combs and extracted boxes from uh, one apiary to another effectively spreading, potentially spreading disease material from one apiary to another. So a lot of beekeepers have adopted a barrier system where the equipment associated with one apiary 
stays with that particular one acre. So the boxes are extracted. If they're not used, needed back out in the, in the field straight away, they're stored. But those boxes essentially belong back to that apiary. So there's no interchange between the apiaries. Some individuals have actually adopted a, a pallet system or an individual hive system. But each one of those systems take a lot of record keeping and a, and a lot of extra material which then has problems with uh, storage with wax moth particularly. So in eliminating it, do you really have to kill the hives? So eliminating AFB out of the system, you, the hive will eventually succumb to the disease. So you've got to step in and actually kill the colony. What you do with the components, whether you irradiate or burn or wax dip, is your choice. You need to do that in consultation with the department, with the apiary inspectors. Uh, when you notify them of having the disease, an inspector should be in contact with you. If not, contact them. And uh, under their instructions, you'll either take one of those courses of action of irradiating, burning, or hot wax dipping the material. Uh, in every case, the bees are killed. There's no exceptions, so the bees are still possible potentially spreading the disease. What are the risks then? The risk in relation to disease, spreading the disease, are several. Besides your bees are robbing an initial source of infection from somewhere else, that's how you might get the disease into the system. Uh, once you've got contaminated hives in the system, by transferring the combs from hive to hive, moving the equipment around between hives or between apiaries, will effectively spread those spores and then cause more hives to be infected in your system. Uh, honey and pollen should never be fed back to bees because they are a source of spreading the disease. There are a lot of other reasons why honey shouldn't be fed back to bees anyway. Sugar syrup bees will perform a lot more better on sugar syrup than they will on honey. And as honey gets older and dark, it actually becomes more toxic or becomes toxic to bees. So feeding honey to bees is not a good practice. Um, they're probably the most significant factors in spreading the disease. Things like uh, beeswax foundation is extremely low risk to, non, to a non-event. Uh, when you buy your queen bee from another beekeeper, the number of bees in there, even if it came out of the diseased hive, is not going to cause you an infection. There's been a significant amount of work done on that subject. The queen candy that comes in the queen cage uh, should have been made up with a radiated uh, honey, so that won't be an issue as far as disease goes. So when we're introducing a queen bee into a hive from another apiary somewhere else, it doesn't usually present a risk in uh, the majority of cases. So by handling the bees, if I get my hands a bit sticky, good reason to wash them. But the hive tool, the jacket, the smoker, are uh, extremely low risk in spreading the disease. The main way of spreading the disease is through contaminated equipment, first, second and third and things like honey uh, being robbed and uh, or feeding back honey to a hive is also high risk in relation to spreading the disease.